if we dive into the topic of workplace experience, so here what I have to mention is that, you know, the strategy and the way how we see workplace experience as such is that this is a combination of people, spaces, and technology. Right. And that combination needs to be well aligned in order the in order that the experience is as best as possible. Right. And for that, the strategy that we've developed is is uh, presented on this slide. So basically shows you the simple, scalable and specialized lens through which you can look at workplace experience as such. And when we, when we talk about simple, here we're simply referring to, you know, the fact that different generations might be working together in the same space, the fact that you want to connect your digital, uh, sorry, your physical assets with digital products. Uh, and when it comes to scalable, uh, we are referring to, you know, growing businesses, office changes, so any kind of changes that would impact the designed workplace experience that you've created for your offices, let's say, or for your workspaces. And we, when we talk about specialized, this is actually referring to, you know, difference, differences between the departments, differences between job roles. So basically all sorts of differences that you also need to take into account when you are crafting your ideal workplace experience. If we look at a few practical examples, first uh, that we'll look into is room booking, right? So the the actual process of booking rooms um, is something that we all need to deal with either on daily, weekly, or monthly basis, right? And for that process, there are three key elements that we found out that are recently more important than ever before. So one part is the calendars that you use to book out your spaces, right? We've seen countless of cases where the calendars are not optimized, are not clear to everyone, and there's simply a lot of confusion around how to check whether a room is available, how to book it, and how to ensure that the, the reservations are, let's say, respected, right? That, from a workplace experience or the 3S strategy that I've shared before, is the simple concept. So this, these are the bare essentials that you need to take care of whenever you're looking at room booking in combination with workplace experience and how to look, look into that from the lenses of three simple, scalable and specialized. So from a simple perspective, room calendars and having the option of digitally optimizing the availability of rooms or the accessibility of rooms is certainly something that you need to consider. From a scalability perspective, one thing that we've noticed that uh, comes up very, very often recently is the fact that offices and the attendance uh, in, in offices or workplaces is drastically and very dynamically changing throughout the week and throughout the month, right? So basically, this requires you to do stress testing on your meeting rooms, which means that you have instances where the usage levels is very high, and you also may experience instances where where the usage level is very low. You need to be prepared to cater for both types of scenarios. So that's one part of the, let's say, workplace experience strategy, looking from a lens of scalability that you need to take into account when it comes to meeting room booking or meeting room management as such. And then from the room types and configuration, here, if we're looking at specialized strategy, you need to define what sort of room types types are suitable for your business, right? So what we are seeing uh, as a trend coming up globally is that there's more and more meeting rooms, but the meeting rooms are becoming smaller, more dynamic, more modular, and more tailored towards specific activity, whether that's uh, focus work, whether that's simply creating the link between, you know, your virtual teams and your teams in the offices and things like that. So that's all needs to be considered when it comes to the room types and configurations. I mean, one example, perfect example is my, my studio room that you can see here in the background. This is um, a specialized room specifically created for webinars, for podcasts, uh, for or, you know, uh, video trainings, let's say. So that's what, when it comes to meeting rooms as such. And then when it comes to desk and parking booking, 
Um, this is also an area that we're seeing uh, huge developments in and also something that needs to be considered, even though you're not doing, let's say, hot desking as a standard, uh, you know, uh, option where you would be able to select your seat in advance or desk hoteling, you still need to consider various options on how to um, optimize the workplace experience when it comes to the actual workstations or, let's say, desk spaces where you would come and work for a day. From a bare essentials or simple uh, strategy here, you need to think about collaboration, right? So effective and smart co collaboration is one aspect of seating areas, workspaces, or let's say workstations as desks that is often ignored, right? Because if you have the ability to collaborate at your desk without going to, let's say, a meeting room, which is nowadays more, more and more common, that's something that impacts the environment as such and needs to be considered when you're crafting your own workplace experience, right? Nowadays, um, not all meetings Meetings need to happen in a meeting room. Lots of them happen virtually at your own desk um, in the offices as well. So that's something that needs to be considered. From a scalability perspective, what we often see is that although some companies might implement, you know, hot desking, desk hoteling of, let's say, processes, even companies that have fixed seating arrangements would still be looking at flexible seating options, which means that you would have pop-up spaces where you can simply go relocate to have a, a conversation or to have a short meeting that doesn't require a closed meeting space. And that flexibility uh, really boosts the experience as such, But uh, because as long as you're able to move, as long as you're able to be flexible when it comes to the location where you perform your work, that will certainly impact the experience at the workplace and it will boost your business as well because it, it 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 nurtures some type of a growth mindset as well where you think about the activities that you're trying to do and where where you will find the most optimum space to do them and when it comes to the specialized let's say element uh here we really advise you to look into localized amenities. Like, for example, you know, each team might have their own specifics, their own technical requirements. And also from a workplace diversity perspective, it's very interesting if you are able to offer the option of uh, equipment variety for your, uh, for your staff members, right? Where, for example, I would be able to book a desk with a large screen because I'm working on a project that simply requires that equipment. Or I would book a height adjustable desk because I'm working on on some activities that will you know help me be more creative if I'm standing during the day and things like that. So that's from a specialized perspective something that we would uh, somehow recommend you to consider as well. And then the last item in this part of the uh, webinar is when it comes to your visitors. Um, and workplace experience, um, there are, again, three elements that we find uh, super important. So one is the visitor automations. This is part of the simple element of the workplace strategy that we've um, shared at the beginning of this webinar. The automations are really important because, you know, the, the option of your host or whoever is meeting with the guest to be automatically notified when the visitor arrives or the option of the visitor automatically receiving all the necessary information before they arrive to your offices. We could simply look at, the, at an example of a job interview, right? That person needs to be informed on how to reach you, where to park, how to arrive by public transport, who to contact in case they have any issues. So all sorts of automations when it comes to notifying your visitors, hosts, and front office teams are required. And this is, this is the essentials for a great workplace experience. When it comes to uh, readiness and preparedness, this is again under scalability. So here, you know, you need to be ready to either accept multiple guests per day. And at the same time, you need to pre be prepared for any extreme situations. Like, for example, imagine a fire evacuation drill going on. You need to know who is present in your office building at all times, not only who was invited, but who is present as well uh, from, a, from a security or safety perspective. And from a from a specialized uh, element here, we, I would like to share the personalized experience item related to visitor management because the personalized experience 
or any guest will elevate your workplace experience as such because if they get a personalized, let's say, visitor tag together with their visit, or if they get a personalized message at the time when they arrive informing them on, you know, guest Wi-Fi details or even where to grab a cup of coffee and things like that, that really makes a, a huge, huge difference. Okay, we are, we've been through the first part of the webinar, just looking at workplace experience, looking at different practical ways and concepts on how you can apply that um, to your workplaces um, through different technologies that you would be using and connecting people, spaces through technology and really crafting a great workplace experience for your business. The second part of the webinar will be... Uh, uh, a technical, not really a technical, but more of a practical deep dive into uh, MyJone. So MyJone is a all-in-one workplace experience platform that we've recently launched. Uh, it's a desktop app that allows you to interact with all all solutions that we are building and developing here at Joan. So that's one element that we will also cover in the next uh, few minutes. So let me just change my screen so that I will show you the tool. Okay, so you, you should be seeing my Joan portal right now. So from a backend system, what we'll start is I will show you the admin interface. So my Joan for admins means that you can set up your office buildings uh, in multiple locations as well, right? Uh, where under each office building, you would have a full view on how many floors, how many departments, desks, rooms, and employees are available at that location. So from a workplace experience perspective, if you're in uh, if you're the office manager, facility manager, or simply managing the workspaces as such for your company, that's already a very valuable information because you can, at a single lens, understand the uh, resources available in a, in a particular location, let's say. Each building uh, within the MyJone portal then has the ability where you can set up, of course, multiple floors. So let's say if we look at an example of a floor, uh, let's go to the Joan HQ building, second floor. The second floor then also allows you to visualize your physical asset, right? So this is what I was referring to before, where we are connecting people with spaces and technology, right? So when you're visualizing your office, you're making it, uh, let's say, accessible, you're making it available to your staff members. And at the end of the day, this is then a product that um, anyone within the company can use also for wayfinding purposes, right? Imagine you would have a new hire, a new employee, that person wouldn't know where uh, meeting room B is located and he or she can would also be able to check that on the actual floor plan. So from a floor plan perspective, uh, what's possible here with us is the ability for you to define the, uh, let's say, bookable seats, if that's something that would be uh, a requirement for your ideal, let's say, workplace experience. Uh, the bookable seats can be adjusted into zones, can be adjusted based on booking policies that you would like to implement for your company, which means that you could do a mix and match between, you know, fixed uh, desks, between flexible seats, open areas to everyone, and neighborhoods or zones. Like, for example, an example of a neighborhood would be, um, let's say, the, the marketing department or the, the IT neighborhood, let's say, or something like that, while an example of a zone could be a quiet zone, could be a collaboration space. You could even color code that on the map and so on. And connected to, you know, the specialized element that I was mentioning, under amenities, you also have the ability to identify or indicate what sort of equipment is available on a particular workstation. So imagine if I would go to the office, I would actually, as a user, have the ability to filter according to my specific needs. Like, for example, if I'm searching for a height adjustable desk, I could simply pre-filter that as a requirement and then select that desk for my day in the office, for example, right? Um, then moving on from the, let's say, desk management perspective, there's also meeting rooms, right? So from a meeting room perspective, you have the ability to connect the meeting rooms from directly from your company calendar, whether that's Office 365, uh, Google Workspace, or any other uh, calendar that you would be using. 
and you are able to connect that with a digital display that you're able to implement in front of the meeting space. That will give you and your users accessibility to the room, uh, so quick accessibility for ad hoc bookings, and also it will in some way visualize your calendar so that you would, let's say, avoid any kind of meeting interruptions, rooms being booked but not used, or vice versa, where the room is used and, and let's say, not even reserved, right? From a parking perspective, within the MyJone platform, you would have the ability to define the number of parking spaces. So that's, again, another, let's say, um, shared asset, could be a shared asset within your workplace that you may offer to either a limited number of users or to everyone so that they can, um, they can reserve that before they're coming to the offices. The assets option, just to mention, is also available for any other assets like company bikes, company cars, uh, lockers, or anything like that. And then from a visitor perspective, if we're still on the admin interface, you actually have the ability to also set up your visitor management system with all the necessary notifications, with all the, let's say, check-in kiosk devices that you could use. To give you an example, this would be one of them. Imagine uh, once you invite a guest and the guest could be invited either through the MyJone platform or through your calendar directly, right? Um, you could, at the reception, place a check-in kiosk that would allow the guest to uh, check in and the host would then automatically be notified that the person is there. So this is, a let's say, a self-service system that allows you to uh, manage and track your guests in a digital format and also allows them to sign NDAs and other documents as part of their visit. Uh, connected to this as an interesting, um, let's say, um, item, it's also possible to print out visitor tags with your logo, um, maybe even including emergency contacts and so on. So that's just an idea to consider in case you would be looking to improve or elevate your workplace experience connected to managing your external guests and visitors. All sorts of integrations, uh, user directories, uh, and so on are available within MyJone. Uh, so I wouldn't go further than that. I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse of the platform from an administra administration perspective. And then the MyJone platform is not only used for you know, managing and controlling and setting up your workplace from a technology perspective, connecting you know, people with your physical spaces uh, through technology. Technology, you also have the ability to share this access uh, with your, let's say, staff members, with your colleagues, uh, who then use this platform to either, let's say, find their teams. Uh, imagine that uh, I would work in a company and I would be part of the marketing team. I want to know whether my team members are in the office tomorrow. And I see that, for example, four of them are there. And that makes an ideal use case for me to join them as well for some uh, collaboration activities or projects that we're working on where we could meet face to face uh, and uh, eliminate the vir virtual uh, virtual screens for a moment, right? Um, the the other option here is it, the system also allows you to check the presence. So, for example, if you have imagine that you would have catering services on site, you could actually, from an administration perspective, quickly check how many people are expected to come on any given day. And you can adjust your catering needs for that specific day according to the attendance that is projected, let's say, right? And then within the same platform, you would also be able to register and keep track of your guests. So maybe to give you a few examples here, uh, Max uh, Max visited us today at 9, left 9.36. So that's the time when he checked in. That's the time when he checked out. So the visits option here would actually show me the real time, would actually show me who's currently signed in or all the visits that were happening through the day, right? So from a front office or reception perspective, I could say, oh, we're expecting Clay. Clay is expected to come at 4 p.m. He needs to go to the bubble room. There's no catering requirement, but at least I know that uh, Clay is coming and Angela is the host. So for example, from a, you know, even personalized welcoming experience, once Clay arrives, I could say, well, welcome Clay. Uh, I will, Angela will automatically 
automatically be informed that you're here. Thank you for a visit and we wish you a good time. Um, from a reception perspective, uh, let me just mention that you're able to check in, check out your guests, and the guests are able to check on, check in and check out also on the kiosk app that you have available on your on your iPad, for example, right? Um, at the same time, you would also see everyone who's invited. So Francesco, for example, is coming at five. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I at least know that I still expect a few people to come today. Uh, from a catering environment or from a location perspective, you could add all the details as well so that you know, for example, where the person is going uh, to meet Meredith, for example. Then from a desk or workstation perspective, you can quickly see the occupancy statuses. You can actually filter per zone, filter per, I don't know, type of amenities available. And you can do the same for parking and also see the availability of your shared assets or available assets within an office floor plan, as I've shown you before, right? And this option, just as a, let's say, fun, um, fun fact, is also possible uh, to be displayed on your own device. So imagine at the entrance of the building or of the floor plan, you could actually automatically see who's there, um, what's the occupancy state during that day so that you're not entering an office with no idea who's there and no idea what to expect and no idea who to have lunch with, for example, right? Okay, and this was a very quick introduction to the MyJoan platform. So what I would finish with before we move to the Q&A section is also just want to show you a brief look at the app. So the app as such is an extension or the front-facing app of the entire solution, which includes everything that we've mentioned today. And from a workplace experience perspective, allows let's say me as a user to book a desk and see which desk I booked for which day, uh, allows me to check in and check out of my desks, uh, allows me to check what sort of meetings I'm planning during the day when I'm in the office, allows me to book parking spaces and also allows me to know, also notifies me, for example, when Francesco will arrive, I'll get an in-app notification. And by that, I'll know that Francesco is there and uh, waiting for me to pick him up at the reception space, for example. So the app as such is then the, the front-facing app that your end users and staff members, colleagues, employees are also able to use as part of the workplace experience platform, let's say.